Welcome back, my friends. Welcome back. To the show that never ends. It's June, baby. I'm so glad you could come inside. Come inside, come inside. <laughs> come inside, come inside, come inside. It's an old uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer song. Yeah, that sounds like something an old person would say. I have no From idea. brain salad surgery. Oh, yeah. I no Who knows that one? Is. Hit me up. Yeah, I don't. But I do know. It's June 2nd, people. We're in June, halfway through the year. It's June 2nd, 2022. Hope you're having an amazing week. Welcome on board, everybody. This is the Crushing Iron Podcast, episode 587. Ah, it's a, it's a beautiful Thursday. It's a beautiful Thursday. Here uh, in Wisconsin. Here, here in Kansas. Hope you're having an amazing week. Recover from Memorial Day. It's a short week. Stop complaining. Get it together. Uh, heading into the weekend. Again, hope you had a uh, an awesome, have an awesome week so far. If it's your first time tuning in, welcome. We appreciate you giving us your time. You know, you have a lot of options. The Triathlon Podcast Universe, just podcasts in general, so we appreciate your time. We know it's valuable. Uh, we cover it all, guys. We cover uh, swim, bike, and run specific podcasts. We will do race recaps. We'll also do race previews. Uh, but for the most part, Mike and I as coaches, athletes, best friends, we just sit back, relax, have an open, honest discussion about what we're going through uh, as coaches and athletes ourselves, but also as a human beings on this planet. We'll also talk, about, uh, talk a lot about what our athletes are going through work with a very wide range of athletes from all across the globe, um, from beginner level athletes looking to their very first sprint and 5k all the way up through elite level amateurs and everyone in between. And we'll use the, the daily dialogue with them, uh, via text, training peaks, email, phone calls and the like to uh, drive the topic of the day. And we'll also hop into our Facebook group like today. Uh, if you're going to be part of that awesome community, just search crushing iron group on Facebook answer one simple question. It's not there just to be there. Answer it. Uh, we'll let you right in. A lot of amazing people in there. Very experienced. A lot of great info and in a uh, sport that is super confusing with a lot of info. Uh, chime in. It's a lively bunch and they're willing to help you out as much as they can. Uh, we will occasionally go in there and uh, do Q&As like we'll do today as part two from the one we posted last week uh, and let that drive the discussion of the day. That's it. We don't do sponsors. We certainly don't do ads. Uh, but we do have an agenda, and it's an important one. And that's to keep you happy and healthy in your endurance sports journey. Uh, and I do want to welcome people. I think we have a lot of or substantial, maybe like 10 new listeners. That's what is substantial for us. <laughs> it's, it's very substantial. Uh, I've kind of been noticing a little bit of a thing in the um, statistics. Now we're up to about 17 per podcast. <laughs> 17. 17 listeners. Oof. And you guys are going through a recession, <laughs> not us. We are, we're we are in a on. bull, All a bull cylinders. podcast market. Yeah, we are. No, uh, but welcome if it's uh, one of your first times. Yeah, seriously. If it's one of your first times, we appreciate you. When you and, you know, um, yeah, if you love us, you love us. Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> it's, we're, we're it's lovable, sort of we're lovable because we're, yeah, we are, we are, uh, we're lovable because we're non-threatening and we just kind of show up and we're here. Uh, we can be your doormat if we need to, and also your doorbell. Uh, but Sometimes yeah. Sometimes your favorite bands are the ones you hate in the beginning. <laughs> that's, that's also so true. I mean, true story. I hated Peaky Blinders. Oh, I, I, I know you did. I tried to watch it, uh, three times before I fell in love with it. How did you? Because I, well, first mistake was I tried keep to coming back is what Mike. I, I kept coming back because well, what happens? I, well, I kept I, giving you the no, business. no. I well, yeah, I kept hearing it was amazing, and you got to watch it. I'm like, I tried. I in for mistake number one was trying to watch in the trainer. It's oh, already kind of hard to hear, yeah. and I'm like, what are you saying? Like, I can't understand uh -huh. you adding your accent. I'm like subtitles. I was lost. So no, it it took me it took me a while, but I was like, I, I kept going back, and now. It's Peaky Blinders, baby. It's one of my favorite shows uh, ever. And I'm waiting for them to put it back on Netflix. And I need some more. I need some more action. It's on there, isn't it? The new one? Yeah. When? Uh, months. But they no, were releasing it one per week instead of the whole season, I thought. Oh, I need to go check things. Yeah, I thought, I think I thought it's they on. were dropping it, might, it on BBC. The last and thing then, might be on there now. All right. I'm going to go check then. What's um, the other one? Oh, Ozark. Maybe that's yeah, one. I, I, yeah, you, I think that's when you I blazed through Ozark like it was. Is it over now? Yeah. It's over. Oh, okay. Because I, I don't think I've watched any of the new. Maybe no. I don't know. Yeah. Best. But thing that's ever, mm. best thing ever come out, come out of the state of Missouri. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Thumbs up. Okay. It's Ozark. It's a legacy. I, I know, mean, but I didn't. Sometimes the last. No, season. no. They went out. They went out well. Did they? Just like Ozark. Yep. Just like Ozark. Okay. Uh, we're gonna pop back into our questions from uh, from last week. Reed McDonald. I've always wanted to understand more about how you believe people should choose a coach. 
What are the questions that people should ask to make sure that a coach and athlete are going to be a good fit? Also, I know uh, that we talk about sticking with the plan, but how can an athlete recognize that a coaching change may be in order? Thanks, gentlemen. Um, you know, that that's a tough one. I, I tell people all the time that, and, and you know, it's like we're, we're definitely not unique or special, but if people really want to know about my coaching style and how I coach, I have 587 hours of information <laughs> of, of interview material. Like most people like just kind of call and check and they're like, Hey, I'm ready to get started because I know who you are. I know everything. It's weird. Like I know everything about you um, mm-hmm. and how you coach. Uh, but it is coaching the coach athlete. It's very much a, it's a relationship. It is 100% relationship. It is based on communication and it's based on trust. Mm-hmm. Um, those are number one, number two, communication and trust. If you don't trust your coach, then you're not in a, and same thing if you don't trust, you know, your spouse or you're not in a good relationship. Like it's, it's all about trust and communication. And then I don't want to say patience because if you feel like things aren't going wrong, then again, communication voice that, you know, but it is, it right. is very much a, it's not a dictatorship. It's a relationship. You're in it together. Uh, you know, you don't work for your coach. We work for slash with you. Um, you know, you don't have to jive with someone perfectly. Like, you know, you, you know, I think that's, you, you don't always have to I'm like, ah, I could go have coffee or beer with my coach for sure. Like, you know, we mesh well. Sometimes it's just, you need someone to give you some, what you're missing, mm-hmm. you know, and like compliment, you know, each other, you know, kind of the alpha and omega type thing, yin and the yang. Um, but that's it. I mean, really it's, it's just, do you trust that person to remove stress from your life, communicate well and have your best interest in heart. And that's really, you know, and that's, that's it. But it's, it's also hard, right. To, to be willing to communicate and, and listen. And, and a lot of times people come to us cause they think, you know, ah, my old coach, like I just don't, I just don't think they paid attention. They even cared, you know, right. it's like, you know, but again, communication goes both ways. If you need something, say something. hundred percent. I think that's true. I mean, I, we're, our doors are wide open and not only that, like you said, we have 587 podcasts, but we have created this, uh, um, community and it's like we're we're always you know we're just we there isn't really anything we haven't seen I mean there's certain things we have obviously but for the most part we've been around it is it has been our lives for the last five or six years just almost nonstop, you know full time I think that's kind of rare probably out there is a lot of coaches aren't that immersed in it necessarily yeah I'd say I'd say less but less than nine less than ten percent of all triathlon coaches do it as their full-time 50 hour, 60 mm-hmm. hour week job. Cause that's what it is. Like it's not part time. Like most people do. They got five or six athletes and that's their side hustle. If you're a full-time coach, it's, it's every bit of 50, sometimes 60 hours a week. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, here to say I know everything and, but we have the community as well, which becomes sort of part of the coaching puzzle in a lot of ways, like reassurance and support and things like that. And, now like they're developing a, a phone tree out there and things like that, that are yeah, really cool support. That, that comes with it, you know? So, uh, yeah, I agree. Availability. I've, I've got an open phone call policy with everyone. And if they want to talk, they just let me know. And usually it works out. So if that's a value and, and you know, you like communication, that's important. Yeah. Uh, Chad bear. I lost a lot of time at aid stations in Chattanooga 70.3. Any advice on how to streamline? Uh, Would have to wait in line for ice almost every aid station, um, but would stock up and keep under hat until the next. Also waiting in line for water, for Gatorade, is hydration, bladder, solution. But I think I read it's not a lot of Ironman events. Um, Also, what what are the team events in 2023? Many want to know, having such a great experience in Chatty. Um, Forearm shiver. For yeah, for real, like get one, <laughs> get in the water early, like we say, um, oh. ASAP. Get in the water; you don't have to wait much in line. Uh, two, we will we'll get to those team events here in the next month for 2023. And a lot of you have been asking for our team events in 23 because it is it's a grand old time. We have some it ideas. Could get interesting. Yeah, it could get interesting. No, but we'll uh, especially with our moves, we have some new ones on the docket. Um, is a hydration bladder solution? No, never. Like no, <laughs> no, no, it never is. Like don't. Uh, you're not like, ah, you know, I think I'm going to put on a 10 pound weight vest to go run my half pass. And no, yeah, no, it's not the answer. It's not. Don't, don't, don't hydration vest it. Um, or camel back it. Just don't, um, be, yeah, be, be aggressive, but 
you know, maybe go a handheld. Yeah. Go to the end. Like a lot, a lot of times people just stop at the wrong place. Like, you know, you, you, ha- you gotta be aggressive in, but I will say like, you know, yours is also somewhat course specific in that Chattanooga is a super crowded course. Cause there's so many people that do it. Yep. And then it's very narrow in a lot of areas, especially on the river walk. It's just very narrow. So I, I wouldn't, you'll probably find in, in other races, it's not like I've never had to stop and wait in any race I've ever done. Um, except for this one at the, like the Hawaiian Luau area, which I don't even have it this year on the river walk. That's the only time I've ever had to stop for 70.3 to get water or ice. Like I just, you run, you grab it, but it is, it's about looking ahead, yelling out what you need and what you want. Ice, ice, people throw up. I got ice. It's not like, you know, walking around at the golden corral, see what you like. That's the, you know, the meat and three of the day. Yeah. And it's always water, Gatorade, food, Coke, Gatorade, yeah. water, you know, it's always kind of, you know, it has a pattern to it. So I, I'm just, if some, if there's a log jam in the beginning, I just run right Go by to it. the end. Yeah. It's just like and I then, say, coming out of the, coming out of transition, don't stop right across the line. Go all the, go up a little yeah. bit, find your spot. And they're the lonely ones and they're, they're wanting to help you exactly. even more because they don't yeah. get as much action. Yeah. So they'll hook you up. They're the feisty volunteers. Let's you jump in their little ice pool. Yeah, the feisty ones. Um, <laughs> Sheila Don Taylor, wishing you both all the best as you make these new changes and adjustments. Thank you, Sheila. Again, you know, like we said last week, we've done this before. It just has been been a few years. Um, Michael Joseph, I had knee surgery in March, torn meniscus, and am planning on Ironman Wisconsin in September. The mental emotional toll of getting injured and returning to training has been difficult to say the least. Have either of you had a significant physical injury? that you had to overcome or have you work with an athlete that came back from one. Thanks for all you do. Um, I have not, where's wood. I have not ever had to come back from a significant injury. Um, and I know you haven't either. Right? <laughs> um, we are, we're pretty good about not getting injured now as much, as long as I've coached, I've worked with a slew of athletes that have come, come back from some kind mm-hmm. of injury. I mean, I, uh, some people have taken on when they've been injured, you know, um, a broken leg before I've taken athletes that are severely overtrained. You just have to be, you have to pay attention and you have to be very, very smart, very, very careful. And even more so patient (laughs) because no one's ever said I waited too long and I, and I took things slowly, you know, like most most people ramp up things. I mean, and sometimes I'll, my athletes will give me a hard time because I'm way too conservative when it comes back from, you know, an injury. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, yeah, because you're supposed to be like my, my job is your health. It's not because you want to go run the day just because it's, it's your health. Like, and I'm, I'm more concerned and you are too, like as coaches, just because you have an Olympic in four weeks, if you're not gonna be ready, I don't give a shit. We're not going to do anything. We're going to just skip it. Like my, my concern isn't your next race. My concern is your overall health and well being, mm-hmm. and your, sustainability and the whole trajectory you're going to have in your athlete life cycle, not being ready for the, to, you know, defend your title as a fifth place age grouper in the 50 to 54 age group at the local sprint try. Right. Like, it's just not like, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it does. It takes a toll um, when you miss things, but it'll take even more of a toll if you rush it back. Yeah. And I think that I'm, I'm no PT, but I just generally feel like uh, injuries our long-term sort of manifestations, I guess, is the way to put it a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And depending on what it, you know, like, you know, football stuff, you can get, go out and get your head ranked. You know, like there's stuff like that. But in long-distance stuff, sometimes I feel like it's imbalancing or whatever that kind of just gives out at the end. Or, and, and it's just sort of a sign, I guess, to, you know, but it, you're right. You got to be patient because, you know, you can, I feel like, come back as strong or stronger if you give it time, you know, I was just watching this thing on Clay Thompson the other night. He was out for quite a while yeah. and now he's back. Like two and, years, right? It was yeah, he's Achilles back to form, but and form. Like yeah. Imagine that, you know, it's like he, he said the whole th- time was like, all he was worried about was, was he going to be able to explode and dunk and, you yeah. know, do different things like that. And of course he has come back and he looks like he's right on top, on target. Yeah, so on the finals, I think that is it, man. It's just, God, I, I that's all I try to be there is, is just support and say, Hey, I get it. I know it sucks. You want to register for races and be motivated and stuff like that, but just hang tight and just let's let's rebuild things up and and be even better. But it's, it's I I think there is a lot of good that you can find in the freedom of getting back at it. 
mm-hmm. you know, because like when you're, when you're going you to get your hunger up yeah, and, and you can get your focus and you can, once it, it kind of forces you to get back to being process oriented, like you were when you were at your best for most people, like, you know, it's like, I'm just checking boxes. Like, but the longer you check boxes, the more you kind of, your appetite gets hungry and hungrier for an immediate result. And you forget what it's like to maybe, you know, you took off training and you're like, oh man, I'm seeing some pretty good results quickly. You know, this is what it's like to be back in shape. It's exciting. It's fun. I'm just, I'm just doing my thing. Same thing. Come back from injury. It's like, man, I can't get time to, if it's a running injury, I can bike more and swim more. But, you know, little small increments are the way to win, not taking big chunks. And that's just where a lot of people get themselves in the trouble. They take, try to take too much at one time. And then that's when they choke on it. And then or their body, you know, breaks down it's a lesson and some it's a lesson a lot of athletes need to learn sometimes or obviously it's this accident and you didn't know it was coming and it just happens but there, there's a i think there's a lot of freedom and and good things that can come from again trying to get back in shape after a layoff you know or getting back into shape and trying to you know uh, rehab after an injury and taking things slowly and really buying into the the slow and steady and the consistency and the process that can can reap benefits for you down the road mm mm-hmm. Couldn't agree more. A lot of opportunity there. <laughs> it's opportunity zone. Uh, Nikki Leo. Nikki. Nikki. Oof. Tough one. Nah, I mean, she's she's swinging for the fences here. Uh, what is your vi- what is your vision right for? <laughs> I'll take this one. What is your vision for yourselves and the team now that you guys are long distance again? We know it can be done and done well, but after having the hub and being ingrained in a community. Do you hope to replicate that again or try something different? I love you guys no matter what. Thanks for the caveat Aww. there, Nikki. Go ahead, Mike. Good caveat. Yeah. Uh, I think, honestly, I think we're going to um, probably transcend and include a lot of this stuff, but move on in a, in a, I think we're always looking for maybe better ways to do things and more effective ways to do things. But I, I we talked about this a long time ago, but you know, kind of our mantras uh, when we get up and start thinking about the work and what we're doing is how can we make this situation better for the athletes today or, you know, going forward. Mm -hmm. So I think that while we're changing and doing something different and, you know, in in theory, the hub was um, like, seemed like about the ultimate kind of move, right. That we could, uh, we're creating a triathlon specific hub where people can come and train and everything like that. It sounds really good. Right. And, um, I think it was a great thing, but I think we can evolve from that. I think we can do different types of things, whether it's, um, you know, different versions of that hub or something Mm -hmm. uh, that, that even have more of an impact with, with building community and friends and things like that and, and, and learning and growing in the sport. But we've got some ideas and one of them is a uh, retreat center in somewhere in Iowa, (laughs) somewhere in (laughs) Iowa. (laughs) We're not coming to Iowa because it's in the middle of where it we'll is be, in the but, middle. Yeah, it's hats. It's, it's a tweener. It's a halfway between. Yeah, we're we're thinking Kansas about it, you know. no. Uh, we got to be more cam- uh, camp locations. I don't know. Yeah, no. You, I mean, you said it really well. I mean, you know, like you said, like we've we created this team a long time ago. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, it's it wasn't created before the hub. You know, we we created the hub. It was telling somebody the other day, like we did the opposite of the field of dreams. You know, it's like build it and they will come. Ours was they will come and then you build it, you know, and that's kind of the, the, the route that we took and the hub was incredibly successful. And we, we both feel very, very fortunate to have, have built it and had, especially during the period of time that we had, it was, it was able to serve as a, as an escape for athletes during the pandemic to come do virtual races and to train when no one was doing anything, no one was allowed to do anything. We were still there doing our thing, you know, providing opportunities for athletes. And that I think is, is exactly what we'll always want to do is, do things for athletes and how can we make the biggest impact uh, for the people that we coach? And, and I, I go back and forth. I mean, I, you know, I know you've, you've got some, some really, in my opinion, really great ideas for, for stuff that you want to do in Wisconsin. I've got some ideas for what I want to do in Kansas, but I'll be honest. I, 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 I go back and forth a lot in, in, in what's the, what is the right answer that can give us the biggest widest opportunity to provide the most impact to the people that we work with. And, and, you know, for a lot of people, you know, I think this is true for everyone in training, you know, and, and 
it's not, you know, people don't have, there's not a lot of triathlon training facilities in, in the country. You know, it's not because they're not successful. You know, it's because people don't want to do it. And most coaches don't do it full time. You know, we are lucky to do it full time. And we are lucky enough to have this one be super successful, successful enough to where we can, you know, do our own thing after this, you know, in, mm-hmm. our, in a different location. I, I always look at, you know, and we've always looked at everything we do in an organic and in almost a holistic way, you know, because we don't, we don't just train athletes physically. We are supportive and we care about how they're doing mentally and emotionally, you know? And, and so when you look at opening and providing a, a brick and mortar space, when you're, you know, we've got five coaches and five coaches and five and 400 athletes across the globe, you know, maybe only over the course of the year, maybe only 25% of those can come to the, a training center or a camp. Okay. How do you serve the other 75% just as well? Right. And, and so I always kind of go back in between, you know, providing, you know, an opportunity in a space because a, I think people like to come and, and see their coaches and hang out and have that kind of community and that kind of cheers, that cheers vibe that, that the hub had. Um, but I also think there's a great opportunity to, you know, connect more virtually, you know, and, and do things and educate and be there and, and provide more mental and emotional support opportunities for athletes that might not have the resources or the time, the availability to, to fly or to drive. And so it's, it's, it's evolving, you know, and I'll be honest, I'll take tips or advice or suggestions on how, you know, we've always done yeah, that, I you agree know, with that. we have always been, I mean, people, I bet people don't remember this, but I think three and a half, four years ago, we posted in the closed Facebook group, but what would you guys like to see in a triathlon training facility? And uh-huh. while some of them were, you know, grandiose and fantasizing with, you know, 80, 80 lane, 50 meter lap pools with daycare. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what you guys think triathlon coaches make. We don't make that. But a lot of what we heard and read, we took from, we took that and applied to the hub. And that's always so successful. So right. if you had, especially from the team, if you have ideas of what you'd love to see or you want more of or less of, hit us up. Hit us on the hip, baby. Um, you know, pound C26, you know, after you pay just and tell us what you're thinking. But no, it's, I, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot, you know, I th- things I think we can do. Um, but, you know, both of our wheels are always turning and we both got some, some ideas of things I think can be, uh, done really, really, really well. And, and that's never been, neither one of us ever shied away from, doing something, even if it's never been done before, you know, and, or, or people don't think it's going to be successful or, well, this is a bad, 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 bad timing to do this. I'm like, how are you going to like, just let us worry about it. Okay. And, and we, we figure out a way to make it work. And so, yeah, I think, um, like yeah. you said, going back to how to support our athletes the most and, and whatever that looks like, how do we do it? You know, yeah. but that that's definitely a huge piece of, um, of both of our next step is how do we serve our athletes? just as much, frankly, if not more, and if not better than we have in the last three years. Yeah. I, I think we've, we've learned a lot here about what's great. We learned a lot about what we really enjoy mm-hmm. and we've kind of defined our, we, uh, I guess, kind of sculpted your and I's understanding what we like and what we really want to go toward yep. um, through the hub. And there was a lot of things that were awesome and a lot of things that were like, nah, I don't know, you know, maybe that's not, but Going forward, I mean, like for me, the whole thing with the model of run camp, for example, is really something I enjoy. So that's kind of where I'm trying to like put my head space and how can we get, because what happened, I mean, you have to admit, like if you've been there, you you really leave with good friends. And I mean, oh, dude, that's, it's there's something about being there and being around people for that long. And uh, that to me is, is really where the, you know, the gold is, is like building connections and building friends that people can race together, look forward to meeting each other at different races. And you always hear it's like, I met somebody from C26 and we had a great time at the race. It's cool, man. A lot of people don't have that. So, um, you know, going forward, I also think about, you know, having a yearly C26 convention with you as the keynote speaker up there motivating Everyone, but like, like even though just finding like a, we've thought, city, we've thought about we have that thought before. about that having a city where we just kind of hang out and pick a weekend and uh, you know an odd not odd time of year but like a a good travel time of year and pick a centrally located city and just say no cost 
if you can make it in town, we'll do a couple group runs, but we'll come in, we'll, we'll set up shop at the Motel 8 conference room and, uh, you know, and have a thing. No, a little booth. You can have your own booth. We'll have, uh, exactly. speed dating sell your insurance or whatever it is you do. Yeah, you can sell your in- Yeah, you can sponsor the... Yeah, you can sponsor it. We'll, we're always taking sponsors. No, it, that'd be fun. Actually. It's interesting, you know, like, in, I, I was thinking about this yesterday um, when... You know, Monday or I say whatever day, I don't know day. I'm moving. Whatever day it is, or Today's I moved, Thursday, whatever, man. whatever Thursday, Thursday, uh, Thursday of, of whatever month we said every day we're in. <laughs> but whenever we, whenever Chris posted that thing in the Active Athlete Group about you know sharing your phone numbers, now we and then like 48 hours later, we've got this like gigantic directory that's basically like what'd you call it? Like a phone tree, a phone tree for help, right? Yeah. For not to call and talk about watts per kilogram or the next power meter or what do you use for aero helmet but a list of people across the country that are here for you right they want to support you and it is a and and you know when we talked about i think in the previous podcast when someone asked about what does it take to get into coaching you have to want to work with people And, and and i know you and i both struggle sometimes with the responsibility we have as coaches because you know we don't take on every athlete that wants to be a part of c26 you know or wants us to coach because we don't have the capacity but one of the things that i i, I do i always struggle with and, and i hope that our our athletes remember or kind of think of this sometimes is that you know and and why sometimes you and i might seem more stressed you know than other times is that every time we say no to someone to coach them, we are, and not that we are the greatest team in the planet and we have the best people ever. You're not going to find, you know, the right team for you. But when, if you're an athlete of ours, then can you imagine what your life would be like if we had said no? Right. And there was no, and you weren't having, you didn't have C26 or you didn't have, and cause, and C20, cause C26, don't get us wrong. It's not Mike and I, <laughs> you know, it's, it's our, it's the athletes that we are very fortunate enough to work with. Like they are the community. They provide the culture. You know, we just kind of shepherd it whenever we need to, but we really don't cause it's kind of self-policing, you know, but it's, so when I look at that, you know, and, and the impact that it has on so many different people, sometimes you think like, you know, you know one, you know, what if I had told so-and-so or never responded to an email and just deleted it, never responded what would their life be like? You know, not that, you know, be like in shambles, but a lot of them love it. You know, the same time it's like, and then the same extent, you know, when you talk about what, what can we do next or what, how can we evolve? And we're very fortunate to have learned from a, a winning experience with the hub, but we did, we did find there were things we can do better. So we do feel like we have a responsibility to, okay, well you see on one hand, how impactful a community and coaching and camps can be to a person, not just from a performance you know, uh, standard, but also from just a, a life standard. And so your, your thought is like, how can we help more people? Right. And so, and that, that's, that's the, that's responsibility that I think both you and I have, and that's what we're, you know, we're going to focus on for, you know, for the next chapter. Yeah, I agree. And let me just give one example of how I'm thinking about that in a, in a way where, cause as, as long as we've been involved in this and, and I've been coaching, I, there's a lot of people that get in this sport and it really changes them and does some great things. And then suddenly they're vanished. Mm-hmm. And and I wonder, well, what happened? You know, it's burnout or it's a lot of other things going on in life, but I think they still like the sport because they try yep. to hang around it and they're trying to get back in it. That's one of my in areas of interest actually is to help someone bridge the gap, maybe from a point of quote unquote burnout or tough times in their life to getting them through it to hang on so they can kind of stick around and, and do a sport that they love. You know, it's sort of this transitional bridge of, of, of ideas. Because I see a lot, and not only that, like helping people later in life because of my age and whatever, I like to think about how do we get people in the sport when it's almost too late for their yeah. lives. <laughs> I mean, if you're at a certain point, you know for a fact that if you don't get your shit together it might be too late. It's and never going to get easier. Yep. Never. So I, I'm looking for that entry point where, you know, I, it's like a lot of people, I want to go do an Ironman. I'm out of shape. I'm going to go do Ironman. Well, a lot of times that doesn't really work out, yep. but 
I'm real interested in how that we can, you know, build that in a way that it does work out. So you don't like go, yeah, I'm on fire. And then I'm just even worse because I crashed harder after that. Yeah. And you can keep your health That's longer right. in life. Great, great question, Nikki. And kind of a, a follow up to that from Malika. With moving Malika. From, from with moving from chat and closing the hub, do you plan to do more camps, quote unquote, on the road in different geographical locations? Or will you continue to go back to Tennessee and Texas? Congrats on your new chapter. Thanks for all you do. Um, you'll, I think you'll, I can't imagine us never having a camp in Nashville. I mean, uh, you know, at least, right. at least once a year, a triathlon camp, it's, it's just perfect. We know it. We could run it with our eyes closed. We have 45 people coming in three weeks, you know, like it's, it's insanely popular. It sells out a year in advance. And then I can't see us ever moving run retreat. You know, Cause it's like, it's a, uh, it's kind of a diamond in the rough that we found, um, but in terms of doing camps in different locations, sure. I mean, 100%. Um, and we, yeah, I mean, you know, we evolve, things change. Um, but, you know, in terms of doing more camps, I, I could say we hope to provide more opportunities uh, for for athletes. Uh, but no, I, th- I think the Nashville camp, again, is like, is I can't imagine not having it. It's just kind of the... No, I agree. And I think a lot of ways, what you said earlier, we can be kind of be a conduit for more activity, exactly. you know, to bring people together and yep. organize things like that. That doesn't necessarily mean we have to be full on, full on campers, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Running everything. But like, I think, you know, Texas was a good example. It's yeah. kind of, it's kind of bubbled up and, uh, you know, maybe more stuff like that where some of our athletes kind of are the contact points or whatever it may be. And, if we can get into different areas like that, where you have a, we got a lot of people in, in certain parts of the country and make that happen, make it easier for certain people. Yep. Uh, Tegan Jones, when are we having a team race in Europe? Would love to have you all in the UK. Um, as soon as I get over my fear of flying. <laughs> okay. I'm working on it. My goal is to fly in, in, in the next year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, I mean, I just that sounded funny to me. It's just the truth. I know, no, but you're I mean, riding there the, with me. Once yeah, last I'm not a great flyer either. I don't, I don't like it. I think I, I, I think like I you know f- the last time you flew, you flew. You do? I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. The time I thought I was gonna the, die in the Hudson River. The, I was, yeah. The, the the when you flew to New York to shoot part of the uh, Saving Banksy. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the last we, time you flew. Yeah. Six years ago? Is that six years ago? It's got to be. Wow. Yeah, that was a scary. Yeah, I do remember. Flying that. into LaGuardia just freaked me out for some reason. That's uh, it looks yeah. like you're going in the water when you're landing. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, but I'm see, cool. But see, I'm at work. I'm like, I can swim. Fly me over water, I'm well, golden. Even though it's still imminent death. Yeah, but you, you're going to be like, yeah, like I said, smash into the like shoreline. Said, imminent death. I said imminent death. You would have yeah. been like, I'm, I'm not doing very I'm good. I'm not, very, <laughs> I'm not doing very good on my, uh, my positive uh, reinforcement. My goal here. is to fly this year. That's what that made me laugh. It's, 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 <laughs> start small. My goal is to do one of the safest things on earth, which is to get on a plane and fly, you know, fly somewhere. <laughs> it's like, my God. Why don't you do the keys swim at night? Let's try that. The keys swim yeah. at night? <sighs> I don't know. Flying or swimming around in the dark? <sighs> Which ocean? Uh, down by the Keys. I would do that. Maybe over, the like that, maybe the Everglades. Pacific? Area. Nah. <laughs> the Everglades area. <laughs> Swim through the swamp at night. Yeah. No thing. Yeah, I mean, no. I mean, peacefully. Yeah, there's nothing peaceful about that um, <laughs> at all. No night swimming. Night night scuba diving. I'm in. Night swimming with like nothing. Yeah, it's a and little scuba diving with a cage around you. It's a little dice. I do that for sure. Yeah, but a fly? No, I'm out. Like doing one of the safest things ever. I'm good. Nope, no thanks. You have a warped sense of what's safe and uh, and what's not safe. And you can come up and ride on my snowmobile. <laughs> That's cool. Heidi Biddle, how do you work through the mental from negative body talk or a non traditional athlete body to how in the hell am I going to do an Ironman in November? Body dysmorphia is hitting hard. Um, th- I mean, that's, I mean, I think we touched on that in the um, post Ironman St. George, you know, recap yeah. about, about Christian Blumenfeld and how people were body shaming him as he was winning the Ironman World Championships, right? And it's always from the fucking keyboard warriors. Like, you know, the, and it, it, it is, it's typically like the 30 to 45 year old white dude sitting behind his computer judging everything like he knows what he's doing as he sits in his mom's basement and just got them playing World of Warcraft and yelling up meatloaf to his mom. You know, he doesn't make it, you know, like, 
stop commenting on people's body. Just keep your mouth shut. And it, it just, it, it's, it's just toxic in our society about making comments on people. And, and I think we all, I think everybody has some type of imposter syndrome in some area of their life, whether it's as a podcast host or a triathlon coach or, you know, a successful person, you know, like doing this or doing that, you know, I, I, I struggle with it, you know, some, you know, it's like, you know, in, uh, of you, you can frame it however you want in terms of, you know, negative self-talk with your body or am I good enough or I'm never going to be able to do this. And, you know, I think a lot of it, I mean, a lot of it does, it stems back from, you know, probably your childhood, you know, from a, a, a parent or a family or a coach or whatever it is or whatever it is you, you, you had happened to you or you witnessed, like that's kind of how we work, you know, like that's kind of how we, um, we evolve and we don't evolve is to keep carrying those thoughts and, and, and doing things. It's just, it's hard to shut out the world and, and look and see things that are so marketed and, and shoved in your face. And this is what it's supposed to look like. And this right. is what healthy is. And this is what being successful looks like. And, and, you know, it's funny because no one ever projects or markets what happy looks like, right? Because it looks different for everyone. You can't, you know, but like people want to say, Oh, you get in order to be, fit and, and, and healthy, you have to look this size. And oftentimes I see commercials. I'm like that use like specific types of, of models. I'm like, that doesn't look healthy to me like at all. And on the flip side, someone probably sees that and thinks, Oh man, that's so healthy. You know, it's like, we all, it, we all see things through a different lens and the lens that we, that we have, it's very specific to us is our own reality, right? The things that we're struggling with, things we're not struggling with, what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've dealt with in the past. Um, but I no, I, I would definitely not let that get in the way of, of being accomplished, you know, in, in accomplishing whatever it is you want to do. Like we, again, and I think I went back to on the podcast or the, the Q and a part one, when I was talking about, I stopped weighing myself because it's the equivalent of looking at your garment after a great run, then deciding it was horrible. You know, yeah. it's like there's, we, we've become so infatuated with, with weight, you know, or body fat or, or just numbers and metrics in general that we've, we've kind of ha- developed this disconnect and overall happiness and well being. you know, and, and cause the fact of the matter is a lot of times you can't put a specific finger on it cause it's cumulative, mm-hmm. right? It's about, it's about, quality of sleep. It's about, you know, eating in a way that makes you feel good and, and, and be able to perform well and then sleep good. It's about minimizing stress. It's about having good friendships. You know, it's about, you know, seeing people and having physical connection and giving hugs and having meaningful, meaningful conversations. It's about, you know, it's about uh, giving back. It's about being vulnerable. It's about all those things, but you can't market that, right? Because frankly, the commercial would be too long, be too expensive. But it's 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 just one of those things where there isn't a, it's not it's not as simplistic as people make it out to be. You know, it, it's just not. You know, a lot of times I see, and you see people and I, and I, yeah, like man, like it must be man. I can't believe that's what they're going through or that's how they see themselves. You know, but again, we we all have that mirror that's so distorted, right? Like our, our mirror that we see ourselves in, which isn't the act, even like the physical mirror. When you look, when you look back on yourself, you might think you look terrible. Another person would be like, dude, you look great. Like, yeah, you, I know like that's you, a weird one. It's just, it's one of those things like, that, really? yeah, we, we just have this, this warped lens of, of things. Um, and, and it's, I think it's a struggle for everybody in every way in terms of imposter syndrome or how we see ourselves or what can we be better at? Or and it's just not, it's not reality, you know? And again, it's not, it's really not so much other people see something totally different. Yeah. I've seen a lot of shredded dudes that are just terrible athletes too. Yeah. It's also true. You know what I mean? Like, I think that's just a look. It's a, it's a, what society has kind of impressed upon us is what, you know, our goal is to look for bodies, Mm -hmm. but that doesn't translate into athletes. I always talk about going, just going to see an Ironman. You see all types of, you know, different body types and great athletes. And you're right. I think, I think, I don't think it's that simple. I think that certain people, you know, perform really well at, at a little bit more of a way. Like here's like some of these races, you got to be strong too. You know, I don't know. It's just such a weird topic to get into. It's just, how do you get to feeling the best you can and, and, and having confidence with it? I know that the, it's, it probably can be a long struggle and, 
whatever. But I just, yeah, I don't, I, I've just seen athletes. I mean, you look, his story, I mean, I know people don't call baseball players athletes, but, or the greatest athletes, but I think they are some of the greatest athletes. And you just, but some it, of the greatest athletes of all time. I and mean, Babe Ruth was a, yeah, but it, a, a, an alcoholic, dude, overweight alcohol, alcoholic, right? you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, you see, you it's just, just it's it's all over the place, right? And it's all about what's relative. I mean, every every person that's raced for has gotten beaten by someone heavier than them and lighter than them. Mm-hmm. That's all you need to know. Right. Like you know, that's it's 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 so. It, but yeah, there's so much attached to all of it. Um, and kind of going and going back to, which again is why the sport is so complex and and not just about, you know, it's one of those things you have to do as a coach. You know, you have to talk through these people's belief systems, you know, and what they, what they like and what they don't like about their body or about their image. Or, and sometimes you have to remind people to make sure they're not sacrificing performance from, because of an addiction or distorted eating because of, you know, they don't want to eat or drink before or during a ride because they want to lose weight, but at the mm-hmm. same time they want to get faster. So it's, you're, you're 95% psychologist, you know, um, social worker, you know, teacher. And then the rest of it is, you know, you're a, you know, coach sports scientist and then, you know, loosely term a scientist, but, um, no, I mean, listen, like this is, yeah, I think we, we mentioned that I think it'd be great, you know, for, uh, either through email or text, if you're an athlete that we work with, um, or if you're not, and you're just in the closed Facebook group, you know, um, we've, listen, we did our very, very first camp that wasn't even our idea, right? You know, five years ago in this June, be our fifth year, fifth year doing camps. Yep. Fifth year doing camps. We've had about 200 people come through just at Nashville camp. It wasn't even our idea. Someone else, someone kind of popped in into the, the closed Facebook group back when there was four people in there. and was like, Hey, you guys should do a camp. Yeah. We're both of them we'll stay at Mike's house. And we'll stay at Mike's house. <laughs> we'll <stay at> Mike's <laughs> house. Danny like, okay. Sturdivant, Jason Ramley, um, Ross. maybe Ross Kaffenberger. Um, and I texted like, yeah, I'm going to do a camp. Maybe do that. The format we had for that camp, it's a format we still have now. And, yeah. and so one of the biggest benefits and one of the reasons we work so freaking hard sometimes is we aren't a corporate office or a franchise. So we get to kind of do whatever we want to. So, yeah, if you see a need in the sport or you see the need or, or a, a, you know, an opening for us to be able to be impactful or, or help support the sport and support athletes and do things that are that and honestly just help people in general. I mean, that we're honestly, I think you and I are both about we're more about helping people through triathlon than you are about helping triathlon and then have it help people. Um, it's just kind of a vessel for how we love working with people and yeah, you know, our athletes get, you know, get faster and get better and they're happier and healthier. But you know, the, the goals we have are just, just to impact people. So if you have ideas, shoot them our way, you know, we're, you know, create, we're, we're pretty creative and we're pretty good problem solvers, but you know, we're also, you know, old and sometimes our brains don't work. You know, <laughs> we're, we're not in, we're definitely Speak not in yourself. We're man. definitely not in touch with the hip, you know, things that yeah. are going on in life. Don't ask us that. Um, but yeah, hit us up on, uh, on the TikTok tenders and, uh, Snapchatters. <laughs> no, uh, but no, we listen, we You've been snapping. No, I don't even know what Snapchat is. <laughs> I, I got on it for a day. Yeah. Same here. Two years ago. And as Stuart uh, Rogers, if you, Stuart Rogers, if you're listening, uh, every month I get one email from Snapchat that says, <laughs> it says, you have a you have a unopened message from Stuart Rogers, three hundred and seventy eight <laughs> days ago. And you know what I do? <laughs> Delete. You know? So Stuart, if it was something important, I missed it. You know, it's been it's been over a year. It's not my thing, but you know what is our thing is 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 listening and and trying to do our best for community. So yeah, again, like if you have ideas, if things you loved about the hub or didn't like about the hub or want to do differently or you don't have in your own town, but would love to see somewhere else. You know, just do us a favor. Don't make it like the t-shirts. Okay. Yeah. I'd love, I would buy nine of those t-shirts and then you buy zero. That's not helpful. That's not helpful to run a business, but yeah, we're always looking for feedback and, and creative minds. We, we like being flexible on the fuck around, like we said, and whatever we can do to help uh, support the community and help you guys. We're at least willing to, uh, at least willing to listen. Yep. That's all I got. Happy okay. June people. Happy, Happy June. June. It's Gemini month for me, going back to your horoscope talk. Um, that's it. We recorded this ahead. We're moving. We're going through stuff, uh, but we're still here for you. So uh, be patient. If you do reach out, we'll, we'll get to you in short order. Um, that's it.
Peace out. Chattanooga. See you on the flip side. See you guys soon from somewhere in Wisconsin. Yeah, spoken like a true brother. Yeah. See you. See you.